So I have got with me Chris C. Van Vanicor, uh, Sean Menbung Shannon, I'm Rich Jirachi Maddies. We've also got Joe Biscuit Hat Serino. He will be joining us a bit later, but we do have cameras. We've got some slides. Let's get into it. So first up, we've got some week one results. The first match we had was uh, Codename Carries Next Door versus News Team Assemble, and Codename Carries Next Door came out with a 2-0 win there. Yeah, this was, I think, a great way to start off the season, being the first game of the PMA LCS split. There was over 90 kills in both, like, both games combined, a bunch of back and forth. You know, it's, uh, you know, you saw really, really good plays out of uh, Brick Tamlin for the most part on the side of New Te News Team Assemble, a rookie. Uh, and then on the side of Codename Carries Next Door, uh, Maya and Rafal, some two other rookies looking really, really good and uh, looking to form uh, off the back of their captain's performance in Panic at the Top Hat. Yeah, you can see on your screen the MVPs from that series were Maya in the first game, Panic at the Top Hat in the second game. Maya having a monster performance on Olaf the second game, or the first game rather, and then Panic at the Top Hat having some... Have, just having some great Vigar play all around, and we'll get to some more of those guys later. In the meantime, the next match we had was the Lunchboxes of Doom versus the Power Bottom Boys. Power Bottom Boys also taking a 2-0 there over Lunchboxes of Doom in, I'll call it pretty convincing fashion. Someone wants to take that. Chris? Uh, sure, yeah. So that match was... Honestly, a lot different than I had expected. Um, we had the first game, some pretty hardcore carrying going on from Frontlash. Uh, his Vi performance was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, popping off and dumpstering pretty much every lane on the map. And game two, Rob, I mean, he had some incredible team fights, Like, just ridiculous ults. Uh, there was just great team play overall from PB PBB. They seemed to be a rather aggressive team. So... They took some pretty uh, intense dives and deep team fights into the enemy uh, enemy jungle, but they came out on top. So, yeah, I'd like to to preface this with for those of you who didn't watch, there were subs on both sides. Jimmy was in the top lane for uh, uh, lunch boxes of doom, and then they had Starcraft on the side of Power Bottom Boys. Uh, so. The first game was pretty good from the side of Power Bottom Boys, and then the second game draft was, I think, a little bit questionable, but they admitted to it in the post-game interview on the side of Lunchboxes of Doom. They were just trying to have some fun, try some new things out that they wanted to try, because at the end of the day, the Cho'Gath Cho Cho and Starcraft was just absolutely... Yeah. I mean, he was the eater of worlds, as uh, his lore indicates. He was massive. That's true. Yeah, I didn't even comment on that. Yeah, he that that Cho'Gath was pretty ridiculous, and that that allowed Rob to get those those nutty plays. That uh, so. four-man shockwave is so yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, we will, <laughs> and we'll also be visiting some Rob shockwaves later. He also, not to mention, he had quite a few solo kills mid lane, including a first blood and a one v two off a uh, gank. So just some nuts play from PBB, and I think one of the themes we'll see from the three teams that got two O's is they just displayed some insane synergy and cohesion just from week one, CNC and D doing the same thing, and we'll talk about OEG in just a second, but I think same same thing applied to them. So speaking of... Are we going to... No, we're not going to OEG next. We're going to Popo's Pecking Order versus the Long Anime Schlongs. This was our first draw of the season. Popo taking game one, LAS taking game two. Yeah, um, I'll actually talk about this. The uh, Popo's Pecking Order was a team that initially I thought was going to be super, super strong. Um, they, I had watched a lot of their scrims. We, we even scrimmed them a bunch of times. And they just seemed like a really strong team. Um, so like so much carry potential from every lane. Uh, even like like jungle through jungle could go around the map. I mean, Menbung is here with us, but uh, he could, he could go around the map and pretty much choose any lane he wanted to get snowballing, and they could pretty much carry the game from there. Um, so I actually was a little surprised to see them go one one here. But here, Marp and uh, and General Dill both were able to make some crazy team fight plays in the second game. 
And yeah, they just managed to pull out the win. The the game was kind of close, actually, if I remember correctly. Yeah, if I'll just be unbiased and say it real quick, both teams drafted, the, the team who won drafted the better scaling comp uh, mm-hmm. in the end. Uh, team The first game, trying to deal with the Camille, and then once the Camille was done, Popo's pecking order could really take control. In the second game, the LeBlanc was the issue in the beginning for um, long anime slongs, but once the LeBlanc uh, team fighting became more of a thing and there was time to scale on the side of long anime slongs, they kind of just rolled over past a certain point. So drafting mistakes and blunders on both sides, um, and Dylan's Camille is nasty. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on. Next series, um, Ashin's E-Girls versus Send Nudes. This was our last 2-0 of the week. OEG picking up that 2-0 over, over Send Nudes. Um, disclaimer, neither I nor Menbung watched this, so we're going to have Chris talking about his own series, so don't go too hard on him, but go for it. <laughs> Ripsky. Um, <laughs> you know, honestly, I, I think uh, Caleb said this the best in the post-match match discussion on Facebook. He said that uh, the real MVP was the team comp that was drafted, which we played pretty much both games, uh, except for one alteration, we changed out the Sejuani for the Maokai jungle. And uh, I think it was just really reminiscent of like an old TSF comp. Um, and like, you know, the three tank, two carries. And I think uh, what ended up happening is SN drafted the first game for a solo queue match, um, if you will. Like, the... The casters even mentioned that it was an individual uh, type of comp, so each player had like a lot of individual carry potential, but their comp itself didn't work well with each other. Um, and I think that was that was a big issue. And I don't know if their team play was it was probably a little bit less cohesive than they might have wanted. Um, but OEG just looked really strong. I mean, we 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 played pretty well in terms of comms. I think we were pretty good. And same game two was a little bit closer. I think uh, SN really put it together um, and tried to fix some of their mistakes and they definitely did um but we still we had the same comp same kind of we knew what we had to do same deal as the game before so spoiler alert don't give c van cogmo except that's way harder now because he has an actual champ pool lol (laughs) anyway next match the final one of the week uh double penetration versus they are here in that series was also a draw dp taking game one over or on the back of bear jr being a monster in the top lane and then TH taking game two in a lot closer fashion, I think. Yeah, it was pretty... Um, this one also featured two subs, just like our first game. So our last game and our first game of the week had two subs, obviously, with uh, schedules being a little bit hard at the end of the school year. Rolls around for most of our collegiate brothers. Uh, we had um, Labby subbing in for the jungle on the side of Bareback double penetration and um, is that on the what, side. is that actually yeah. like their full name now? Yes. Oh my god. And um, on the side of they are here. Um, the sub was uh, Super Kami Guru now in the support position. So um, first game, Bear Junior is the the thing. It was the Aurelia carry. The Shen did not get to play League of Legends, unfortunately. Uh, and Garfield Juice was just not having uh, a really fun time up there. Uh, and then in the second game, it was very much the opposite, um, where he tried to get a lead by picking the Aurelia again, but the Malachi soul killing under tower and just a bunch of <laughs> just a bunch of kills everywhere. Uh, It was a very interesting, Steven and I both casted that game, and it was uh, quite an interesting turn of events from game one from game two. It went really 180 from what you thought game one expectations were. Yeah, it was was pretty ridiculous. Um, I I was, I mean, Bear Jr. just hard carried game one, obviously. Uh, That Aurelia was just way too fed. He had some mistakes, like, going into the second game. I think he thought he was still, like, 20-0 and and was like, oh, yeah, I can still just 1v5. But it ended up uh, dying a lot and losing a lot of uh, pressure on his side of the map. So I think uh, TAH was able to have better team cohesion and had better team fight because of that. And they ended up pulling out the victory. So, you know, we saw good parts from both teams. I think both teams have some strengths that they should play around more often. And uh, looking forward to seeing the next week. Yeah, I I do agree. I, I think it's also very hard when you've played and performed so well on a champion to 
Yeah, I think we memed on the cast about he thinks that some of the extra gold that he had left over would have accumulated and put like rolled over to the next game. But uh, I think it's hard when you're play for any player to, especially amateurs, to play the same champion into a same type of matchup and not think you could abuse it the same way. Rich? I got. I really got nothing else. I don't really want to say much about my game because it's my series. No, and that's me. But no, just to go on. Yeah. Yeah. So next up, we've got a bit of a new little thing. We've got some funny and fail moments of week one. So we're just gonna pull these up one by one. We have, and we pulled together a lot of clips, but in this. We're just I just pulled one from each game for right now. So first up, we're gonna have. Uh, we just delete stuff. Oh, oh hey, word. what's up? Oh, hey, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Hello. Hold up. Let me fix the stream. God, this was. What next... happened to the stream? Uh, I messed something up. Okay. Here we go. Which clip in front? Are we doing video There's still? No social... Um, no, just turn off the video. It's okay. So first up, we've got an interesting one v one, and I'll send all these clips to the people on the call. I'll send these to Discord. We've got an just an interesting one v one in the top lane between Ron Gurgandy and Rathfall, and I'll just reel the clip. Yeah, I remember watching this clip. Um, oh, hold on. So, yeah. And also, um, foot chat, please feel free to just spam emotes at this point. Like, please. <laughs> spam all the emotes. So, yeah, this is... Again, an interesting 1v1 just ended with the two top laners trading places and trading flashes, no one dying. Yeah. This, the clips get better. I just personally thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I, I remember talking to Rafal about this, and he was just like, he just couldn't believe that he spaghettied so bad on his first, like, game in PMA LCS. Um, I mean, at least he got Ron's flash, but spaghettied. <laughs> yeah, he got he's he spaghettied a little hard. I think he Zonia is a little too early, too. But yeah, so next up from game two of CND versus NTA, we've got an interesting journey from CND. <laughs> Takes the blast going over, <laughs> and then they immediately just all die. And oh god, <laughs> biscuit! This was the series biscuit hat and I casted, and we we're just like, no. Oh yeah! Wow. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really remember that. Um, <laughs> Uh, just yeah, looks really it tragic. Bad. It's real. They're yeah. like, oh, let's let's go over this. Let's go over this wall. Let's take this blast code. Oh wait, we're all dying. <laughs> Shit. Well, next up, this is from. Let me see. I believe this is from. Yeah, this is from. PPO versus um, the long anime schlongs. No, no, this is from Box no. versus PBB. Sorry, that's my bad. But this, but Starcraft was subbing in, and yeah, don't dive in ulting Nasus. So let's just roll this. And oh boy, oh no, oh boy. Um. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you hate to see that happen. The the title of I titled this clip so uh don't dive in alting Nasus and that's pretty much like the only accurate description of this. <laughs> <laughs> so next up we've got from game two. This this is one of my favorite clips of the week, actually. So PBB just taking the dragon. They have a Cho'Gath with alt. 
bought it so she would They leave the so. fucking Maybe. dragon at 69 HP. Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah. This I Menbung and I were casting this and we we're just like, "Oh my god." That's funny. It just Chogath gets something from doing that, right? Like yeah, he gets the stack for he gets, he gets, a, yeah. he gets the alt stack. So I mean, it was wow. smart, <laughs> but it's hilarious. I'm just sitting there waiting for this Chogath to just run down from blue buff. It's an in interesting place. Let's go with that. Next up from this one is from um, PPO versus LAS. This is um. Let's do a quick pause so I can send the clip. But this. <laughs> this oh my god, I'm I'm just gonna roll this. Bottom lane, the ignite, not gonna get another, the kill. Another flash auto chance right there to get the reset and maybe the excitedness, you know. Oh, I think, and the I think people are. I think they're being. Oh, it's just the, oh, the Zorpox. Clip. The Zorp, yeah, Zorpox could have body blocked the ace in the hole. Unlucky, and I think. Barely did. I think what happened there is. The auto attack that he went for, uh, onto or was it an auto attack or was it like maybe it was. Here, let me watch this again. I think it was an auto, or no, it was a W maybe. Yeah, uh, he went for the, he went for the the pool instead oh, of, yeah, and the did. animation of that actually stopped him from walking. So that's unlucky. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I hate to see it happen. Anyway, next up is from let's see, this is from this is from OEG versus Send Nudes. And let me send this again. We've got an interesting gank coming in. Well that's what I'll leave it at. Uh, yeah, this rip. was uh... <laughs> just rip in pieces, dude. Oh the no! Shroom just <laughs> tragic. Just Teemo shrooms underestimate the Teemo damage. Dies on the gank. God, can, can we talk about that B skin though? Oh god, god, I hate the B skin. No, like actually, I've really? been banning Teemo because the sounds from the skin are just so disgusting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which, like, I think that's a valid reason. Hey, man, if you don't like it, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the ne next clip... I'm... Oh, 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 boy. Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom in for this one. Because... Let's see if I can get it. Just... F oh, is this the all chat? Ah, yep. uh, yes. <laughs> This is what Caleb decides to drop in all chat. <laughs> Yo, it's a it's a truly classic issue. It's a common <laughs> problem. You oh, hey, stuck in your mouth? oh god. Was he being serious? Is this so is this laggy? Still unclear if he was being serious or not. God, Caleb, are you here? Can we can we get something in the Twitch chat? Confirming what? or denying it? Oh, the tw the stream is lagging. Is the stream lagging? Damn it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hello? Well, for what it's worth, we'll be putting out a fail montage at some point later, so you'll see all these and more in com coming up. So if anything's getting missed, it's okay. Indeed. Indeed, Arena. Um, let me just poke around. Make sure I got everything. Okay. Well, we'll we'll go. Why don't through. we why don't we skip the the top ten plays? We can just give them the link, and then because it's gonna lag. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. And we um, can just go to upcoming matches. This the last couple clips aren't fantastic anyway, so we'll move. We'll just move up to not the <laughs> not the top ten plays because that'll lag. But we've got our upcoming matches. On Thursday, the 17th at 11.30 p.m. EST, we've got Lunchboxes of Doom versus Ashen's E-Girls. 
on Saturday at 10 p.m. EST, we've got Codename Carries Next Door versus Send Nudes. And then on Sunday, we've got a triple header. Oh, boy. Um, tentatively at 9 p.m. EST is Power Bottom Boys versus Double Penetration. 10 p.m., as confirmed, n News Team Assemble versus the Long Anime Schlongs. And 11 p.m. EST tentatively is Popo's Pecking Order versus They Are Here. We also appear to have lost Men Bung. Rip in pieces, but... Yeah, just short, quick, easy recap. I'm I'm looking forward to next week. I don't know about you guys. Oh, I am too. It's really, you know, week one. I think they said it, you know, in in NA or EU. You know, week one, you always have some wacky shit happen. But you know, as the weeks go on, we'll be able to see who comes out on top, and you know. Oh, I know why my stream was lagging. There was a, um. Acrobat re uh, Adobe Reader is installing an update, and I, oh god, that might be why. God <laughs> damn Adobe! Freaking yeah, well, Adobe, you know, dude. I'm actually I'm pretty excited for next week. Um, we got I think an opportunity for some teams to start to break break off onto the into another two O week possibly, so they they kind of break out ahead mm -hmm. of the pack, and then uh, another possibility for other teams who got two O'd to bring it back and kind of stay stay with it and uh, instead of falling behind and uh, going 0-4 um, doesn't necessarily do anything terrible in terms of standings later on but uh, these early games like every week counts so every game counts actually now that we have the single or it's like based on win-loss record so the more wins you have you know even if you can go 1-1 hopefully we can see some teams pick up a win and uh, bring that bring that uh, bracket closer which match are you looking? Are you guys looking at for the match of the week? Hmm. Um. Personally, for me, um, you know, with Rafal, you know, knowing Rafal personally, I think I'm just really looking forward to his match. Um, just because I could talk to him one on one about it, and you know, talk to you know, and with, with seeing how his team did the last week, I'm really excited to see if they could two zero again. Um, but we'll see. You know, I'm I'm actually curious to see. Uh, any of the teams that won ones, how they play into their matches, um, but more specifically PBB into DP, I that's, think that's what seeing, I was going to highlight too, actually. Yeah, because I, I think it's going to be interesting to see if DP can can pick up uh, pick up a win against a team that two owed, and PBB had a substitute top laner, or actually, yeah, top lane. They swapped Sub front lash to the jungle. Yes. Um. So front lash will be back in the top lane, and then they'll have hopefully. I think they don't have any subs this week. Um. They'll hopefully have their jungler back, and. We can see their full team. Maybe, maybe it was a fluke that they two owed. Probably not, but you know, you never know. Um, <laughs> and I wonder if uh, they're going to have a different or DP will have a different game plan in going into a team that they know is capable of winning. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for. Rich, are you excited about your match this week? I'm always excited for my matches, dude. I'm excited to destroy Menbung in at one game and then get destroyed the other. <laughs> Nice. I feel like we're going to 1-1, but that's just me. But that'll do it for tonight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry about the lag. We'll... Hopefully I don't have stuff start updating in the middle of the next stream.